I'm happy to be here. It's been a little journey that I've been on for a while, but uh, God is, Pastor Marie said, God is starting to heal me, starting to uh, make me feel a little bit better anyway. Uh, I was going to preach a message once I was blind, <laughs> but now I can see, but uh, uh, we, we haven't got there yet. But uh, I, I believe that God has a great message for us this morning. Um, I know Pastor Maria preached a, a message a couple of weeks ago on, uh, um, I can't remember what Sunday that was. What was a couple of weeks ago? Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday. Sunday. And uh, so I'm going to sort of use a little bit of that, but I believe God has a word for us today as his people, especially in the midst of this pandemic as, as we're starting to come out. Um, and the word that I got is suddenly. Amen. Suddenly. Um, when you see suddenly in the Bible, in the uh, NLT, the New uh, Living Translation, what I use, uh, suddenly is in the Bible 104 times it's used. Each time the word suddenly is used, God moves. Amen. God begins to move. When you hear the word suddenly, God is going to move. Um, but before we get into the word, I want to go ahead and read this scripture. I'm going to keep referring back to it. It's out of the book of Matthew, chapter 24. We're going to read verses 3 through 14. It says in Matthew 24, verse 3, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. Pastor Maria talked about deception. People that are coming... Uh, spitting out false prophecy and, and not telling us the truth. Verse 5, For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will, hear war, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. We go to verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all the nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from their faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Amen. But the one who stands firm to the end, the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then, and then the end will come. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray for this word. We pray that this word will, will just be a focus, uh, just that we could focus on it, Lord, that we could live it. That it'll touch our hearts and give us faith to go on, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Suddenly. Anybody ever have a suddenly moment? Yeah. Suddenly. You know, suddenly, the kids are playing in the room, nice, and suddenly they're spinning on the ceiling fan. <laughs> suddenly. You know, it seems like our whole life is a bunch of suddenlies. And so it is in the Bible, you know, when you see suddenly, and in Pentecost Sunday, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it talks about the, uh, God's people. It talks about us. It talks about you. Gathered in one accord, gathered in one place, just like here, and in his presence church. And it tells us in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, on that day, Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. They were all together in one place. You see, with this pandemic, what did the enemy try to do? He tried to yeah. separate us. He tried to keep us home. He tried to keep us in fear. He didn't want us to get together because, you know, when we get together in one accord, we're powerful. Amen. Not that we are powerful, but God's power is in us. God begins to move in us when we are together. You see, because we're all not on the same page health-wise. We're not on the same page mentally. We're not all on the same page. But we come together, and my weakness now becomes strength because of you. Your strength now becomes my, you know. And we just sort of live like that. They were gathered in one accord. What were they doing? They were praying. They were singing. They were praising. They were worshiping God. Suddenly, it says, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Suddenly, suddenly, 
And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, Pastor, suddenly, they began to speak in tongues of other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Suddenly. Suddenly is defined as happening or coming unexpectedly. They had met in the upper room. It's ironic that that upper room where they were meeting is the same upper room where they had the Last Supper. Where they had the Last Supper where there was betrayal from uh, Judas. Peter denied Jesus. And in that same upper room, 120 gathered, the Holy Spirit fell. That promise fell. It's happening or coming suddenly. Changing character all at once. An unexpected occurrence or sooner than expected. The word suddenly comes from the Hebrew word petha, which translates in an instant. Where have we heard that before in the Bible? In an instant, in a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. Suddenly is used 101 times in the NLT. Some of the synonyms that... Synonyms. Sin Synonyms for suddenly, abruptly, unexpectedly, all at once, all of a sudden, and out of the blue. Have you ever used those? Yeah. Suddenly. You know, especially in this time of pandemics, you know, we, we need a suddenly moment. Yeah. Some of us need a suddenly moment for our health. Yeah. Suddenly we are healed. I have a cousin right now that, that was going through cancer a couple of years ago, um, was declared cancer free for a while, was in remission. All of a sudden she wasn't feeling well a couple of weeks ago. Suddenly the cancer returned even worse than it was before. Suddenly. I have a friend of mine that I worked with for many, many years. Suddenly she was here and suddenly she was gone. You know, we can't discount the things that are going on. We can't discount the, the virus that's going on because people are still losing their lives. So we have to continue to be careful. We have to be care, uh, be continue to be safe. But we can't live in fear. Amen. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Because suddenly, suddenly, how many of us need a suddenly moment in our life? Amen. When God moves he moves suddenly he moves in the spirit he moves in the supernatural you know sometimes we expect God to move in the physical but God is a spirit he's a supernatural being and he moves in the supernatural the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians that we that our, our enemies are not flesh and blood our enemies are not each other the enemy is the spirit of darkness the enemy of God we have to you know, many of us don't want to enter into that realm, that spiritual realm. I know Pastor Maria is really encouraging you to get more spiritual. To get out of the natural, more into the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Live in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Because suddenly. The suddenly that scares us most is when it says... He will appear in the twinkling of an eye. Suddenly. When will it end? Suddenly. When is Jesus coming? Suddenly. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? You know, part of, many of us, we live for Sunday. <laughs> oh, there you are. Don't you laugh. Um, we live for Sunday. You know, sometimes the only time we have a relationship with God is on Sunday. We come to church, we do a little singing, we hear a little bit of the word, then we go out, nothing has changed in our life. Absolutely nothing. But God says suddenly. Suddenly, he will appear. Suddenly, you'll have to stand in judgment. Suddenly, you'll have to give an account of everything that you've ever done. Suddenly, are you prepared? Because you know what suddenly is? Suddenly is like that. The Bible says that two people are walking down the road, suddenly, one is taken up. Two people are out in the plow, uh, plowing in the field, suddenly, one is taken up. 
in a twinkling of an eye. We will not even know it, like a thief in the night. And we have to prepare ourselves. Like I said, some of us, the only time we ever have any kind of relationship with God is on a Sunday. God is not a Sunday God. God is a Sunday through Saturday God. You wait? Are we wait? Is it daylight savings time? The bill's in town? What? What's going on? You hear about the new uh, uh, cheer for the Buffalo Sabres? Oh no, we suck a game. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I, I was laughing. Oh no, we suck a game. Anyway. Exodus 7.20. When God moves, you have to remember, when God moves suddenly, he moves supernaturally. Yes. Things happen that there's no explanation for. When God moves. When God heals you, there's no explanation for it. A few years ago, I, I shared with you, my mom was diagnosed stage 4 colon cancer. She was given 3 to 6 months to live. But suddenly, God healed her. And the doctors were trying to take credit for it after they told her that she only had three to six months to live. <laughs> then they tried to take credit for the fact that she's still here. When God moves supernaturally, it's hard to explain. In the book of Exodus chapter seven, verse 20, we read about Moses and Aaron when they're talking to the Pharaoh. And, and then Moses and Pharaoh did just what the Lord commanded, it tells us in Exodus seven twenty, As Pharaoh and all of his officials watched, Aaron raised his staff and struck the water of the Nile. Suddenly, suddenly, the whole river turned to blood. When God moves, God moves in the supernatural. God moves in ways that you and I can never, ever, ever, ever compete with, do, or even think. You know, God tells us that his ways are not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. It tells us in the book of Habakkuk, in chapter 1, verse 5, it says, be amazed. Look and see what I'm going to do. Even if I told you what I was going to do, you wouldn't believe it. And that's what happens with God. God is going to do something. He's not going to tell you he's going to do it because you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. He's going to heal the sick. When Jesus walked healing the sick, you think the people believe, would believe that that was possible until they actually saw it? God moves in the supernatural. He moves suddenly. Joshua 6.20, when the people heard the sounds of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly, the walls of Jericho fell down. The Amen. walls of Jericho fell down. The strongest encampment in the land, surrounded by a wall, impenetrable. Suddenly, with a sound and a shout, God made that wall fall. What is going on in your life that God suddenly can't move? Are things so bad in your life that suddenly isn't going to do it in your life? Suddenly. John 4, 24, for the God is a spirit. So those who worship him, how do we worship God? In spirit and in truth. We start off every service here with praise and worship. Why? Because we come to give God the glory and the honor. Some of us don't understand why we worship God. Some of us look kind of bored, as Pastor would say, as we worship God. It's just to get through to the great preaching you're going to hear. <laughs> but we start off praising and worshiping God. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, what's the first thing? The first thing of the Lord's Prayer. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. He's giving God, God the glory. When we praise and we worship God, we're giving God the glory. As we open up this service, we're telling God, this is for you, Lord. Amen. With all of my heart, with everything that is within me, Lord, I come before you. Amen. Praying for us suddenly. I'm sure that everybody here needs a suddenly moment. Suddenly, my bills were paid. Suddenly, my health returned. Suddenly, my husband's mouth was closed. Suddenly, <laughs> my kids became... what? Suddenly, my kids became saints. Suddenly. And, and we wait, we wait. And you know, how many of us pray? We pray for something to happen. We pray for something to happen. We pray for something to happen. It doesn't happen. We pray, then it happens, and we go, man, how'd that happen? Because that's how God moves. God moves in the suddenly. 
because he's a spirit. Romans 8, 27, and the Father who knows hearts, all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. Who's the Spirit? God. Jesus. But the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. That's Jesus. Jesus pleads for your spirit. Amen. He pleads for you. We all mess up. We all fall short of the glory of God. But we have an advocate that stands in the gap for you, for all your sins. A spirit, a supernatural being or essence such as the Holy Spirit, Luke. An often malevolent being that is bodiless but can become visible. Supernatural. This is, this is a, a, something that a lot of us sort of, we look at this thing and we sort of get, uh, I don't know, supernatural. Uh, because, you know, we're so in tune to watching these things on, on movies. You go to the movies, you see these things, uh, and, and all of a sudden it becomes... It, we become numb to it. But that's, how, that's the realm that God operates in, the supernatural. How, how else can you define somebody that says you have three to six months to live and then they're completely healed? How do, you, how do you focus on the fact that somebody has died and yet they're raised from the dead? How do you focus on the miracles that you see? You, we, can't, we can't give any kind of... of definition in the, in the human secular, it has to be supernatural. That's how God moves. Supernatural is defined of, of or relating to an order of existence beyond the visible observable universe or relating to God. Supernatural. When God moves, suddenly God moves in the supernatural. God moves. Suddenly, sound like a broken record, but that's the word, suddenly. We have to cling to that word. We have to cling to our suddenly moment. Suddenly, God is going to move. Suddenly, my finances. Suddenly, my health. Suddenly. Amen. Without suddenly, what do we have? Hopelessness. Depression. But suddenly. 2 Kings 2, 9 through 11. When they came to the other side, Elijah and Elisha, Elisha said to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. And Elisha replied, please let me inherit a double portion of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied in verse 10. If you see me when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. In verse 11, it continues, it says, And they were walking along and talking suddenly. Suddenly, a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Suddenly. See, somebody reads this and they'll think, oh, that's a fairy tale. You know, the Bible is just stories that are just made up. They're, it doesn't really happen because in the physical, that would never happen. But God does not operate in the physical. God operates in the supernatural. Amen. You have to understand that when you pray, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. You have to trust and you have to believe that even in your darkest hours, God is going to come through suddenly in a blink of an eye. When you least expect it, God's going to move. Amen. We can never give up hope. Suddenly, a chariot of fire appeared. Amen. Matthew 8, 24 through 26. Suddenly, a fierce storm struck the lake. Suddenly. They were out on the lake fishing, then suddenly a storm came. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And Jesus responded, why are you afraid? Today, Jesus is asking some of you, why are you afraid, Justin? Why are you afraid, Ann? Why are you afraid, Debbie? God is asking us, why are you afraid? Amen. See, God was in the boat with the disciples. Amen. God was there. And yet the storm came, they became afraid. Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up, rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. Sometimes our life is like that storm. 
We just sort of go through one thing after another, after another, after another, and there doesn't seem to be any hope, and we don't feel like God is near, even though on the boat he was right there. Yeah. And suddenly, and suddenly, in Acts 9, 1 through 4, we hear about Saul. It says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. This is Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, who wrote 30% of the Bible, the New Testament. And he was going to try to kill God's people. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. The way, that's you, that's us, that's believers. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. Suddenly. Suddenly God's light shone upon Saul. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Suddenly. Talk about the Damascus Road conversion. Suddenly. How many people have you heard that they were just they were just living in sin? They were just they were unsavable. They were just suddenly God began to move in their life. Amen. Suddenly. Matthew 24, 37 through 42. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up until the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. See, people, we don't realize what's about to come. But time is so short. I believe we are in those times spoken of in the book of Revelation. I believe we are in the time spoken of Jesus. The wars and the rumors of wars. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Tornadoes. Tsunamis, cyclones, acts of nature that are just devastating to people. If you look in the paper, somewhere in the world every day there's probably an earthquake. California has earthquakes every day. Eventually one day it's going to crack and it's going to fall off into the ocean and Nevada will be the new beachfront over there. We need to prepare ourselves for the day of the coming of the Lord. We do know that God is coming, right? Yes. We do believe that God is coming. Yes. Have you prepared? Are you prepared? Because it's going to be suddenly. Yeah. You're not going to have time to go, oh, let me, pick, let me fix my hair. Let me put some makeup on. Because I don't want to go sit, stand at the pearly gates looking like this. So let me just work on my eye. And God's going to say, no, no. In a twinkling of an eye. We're not going to have time. Oh, oh wait, can I, can I pray before I go? No. You, you're supposed to pray. You're supposed to ask for forgiveness. You're supposed to do all that before God comes. You have to be in a constant state of preparation. You know, we all know the Word of God. We talked about Sunday Christians. You know, and I was thinking about that verse where it says, you know, two people are walking down the road suddenly. One is taken. Two people are plowing the field. Suddenly, one is taken. And I started thinking, I started putting the spin on it. Two people having an adulterous affair. Suddenly, they're both there and people are taken. Two people drinking in a bar, carousing, having fun. Suddenly, they're still drinking in the bar. And someone's taken away. See, when we're in sin, there is no suddenly. The only suddenly is, whoo, it got hot here. Man, it's hot down here. It's hotter than hell. Wait a minute, I'm in hell. Suddenly. And that's, and that's, we don't want to prepare for hell, but we like prepare for hell by our lifestyle. Amen. You know, the word of God, it tells us in the book of James, just don't listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Amen. Don't just listen to it, Colby. Do what it says. Then it says, otherwise you're only fooling yourself. See, we hear the word of God, and then we do what it says. 
In the NIV, it says, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. But see, so many of us, we hear the word of God and we just sort of go on. We just weigh it. But the word of God is a life-changing word. We need to apply this word in our life. See, we just don't come to church on Sunday, hear the word of God and go, oh, that's nice. You need to apply it to your life. How does that apply to your life? How does suddenly apply to your life right now? How does God's grace and mercy apply to your life? How does God's forgiveness apply in your life right now? How does his forgiveness? Lord, thank you for forgiving me, but I can't forgive my neighbor. Lord, thank you for forgiving me, but I can't forgive my wife. I can't forgive my husband. I can't forgive my kids, but thank you for forgiving. What does God say? Forgive as you were forgiven. See, that's a word. We have to live it. We have to apply it. You just can't ask God for forgiveness and hate everybody else. Let's say if you claim to hate your brother and sister, but claim that you love God, what are you? The Bible says, a liar. Ustero. I don't want to be a liar in God's eyes. So I want to know the word of God. But let me ask you this. If you don't have a Bible, if you don't hear the word of God, how are you supposed to live it? How do you live something that you don't know anything about? The other day, Pastor Lucy bought this, uh, I don't know what it was. I think it was a dresser drawer. It doesn't look like a dresser drawer now, but I think that's what it was. And it come in a box in about 8 million pieces. And it came with instructions. You ever seen those instructions? And I'm looking at it and I go, hey, hon, I, I, can't, I can't understand these instructions. She goes, that's because it's in Chinese. Turn it over the other side. And so, and then I looked at it. I still didn't understand it. It still looked like it was in Chinese. I, for some reason, I don't know if it's because I only got one good eye. I'll keep my good eye out for you. Is that I can't, I can't see those. They, they start, I start getting dizzy after I read. Number one, take this, and I start getting dizzy, and I can't, I can't follow simple instruction. And, and some of us get that way with God's word. We start reading God's word, and we start getting lightheaded. We start getting dizzy. We're like, well, you know, that, I, I, can't, I can't follow that. You know, when it says, don't take strong drink. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's don't get carried away. Let's don't get too Christian-y. I don't want to be. I don't want to be too Christiany. One, I want to be lovable. I want everybody to love me. But you know what the word says? It says, "God, your word is offensive to them." How can I tell them the truth because it's offensive to them? And God's word is offensive to those that don't know. You know, when you see pastors preaching from the pulpit that if Jesus was here today, he would say it was okay for a woman to have an abortion, you know that that's coming straight from the pit of hell. Yeah. And yet there are people that understand that because they don't have the word of God in them. That's right. You know, I'm going to do a message one time on things that people think are biblical but aren't. You know, you know the, the Lord helps those who help themselves. I almost went crazy trying to find that in the Bible. You know that's not in there? It's nowhere in the Bible. But yet for years I heard that. The Lord helps those who help themselves. In other words, get out of my face and go do it by yourself. God doesn't talk like that. The other one is godliness is next to cleanliness. You can go crazy just looking for those two. You can go forever looking for those two. And there's many, many more. Because, you know, but the thing is, out of my ignorance, I didn't know the Word of God because I didn't read it. You know, I've read the Bible since I've been saved now 26 years. I've probably read the Bible a hundred times straight through, maybe a little bit more. Now, one time have I ever heard, God helps those who helps themselves. And, and, you know, but see, we get to that point. And I shared many times about uh, this gentleman that was in our small men's group that was uh, sort of, get the scriptures mixed up and he would just get all crazy and he would just give a quote he's trying to encourage somebody go you go for God so loved the world that Jesus wept and we go what that don't make sense and some people go oh that, that's beautiful oh, that's beautiful scripture. you know that, that's not even a scripture that's two scriptures you're just 
full of what you call it. We, we need to have the word of God in our heart. What does it tell us? Take that word, put it around your neck, carry it in your heart. Teach it to your children. Why? So they don't forget. Because eventually, you, people, you, in his presence church, hello, people watching on Facebook, hello, you are going to be held accountable for what's in this book. Amen. You know, one time, one time, I got pulled over for speeding. <laughs> <laughs> out of state. I was out of state. One time, I got pulled over for speeding. And, and I was talking to the sergeant for the state trooper, and he started giving me this ration. Of, he gave me this rigmarole about how I was disobeying the law. I go, well, where is that in the book? He goes, oh, it's page 27. Blah, blah, blah. He goes, do you know, and as you drive in the streets and the high byways and the highways of Florida, you're responsible to know the laws when you're driving. I go, first of all, I've never seen a vehicle code for the state of Florida. But yet, when I drive on the roads, I'm responsible to know everything in that book. There was no excuse. I said, well, I didn't know that you couldn't do 75 and a 45. <laughs> Who knew? I'm from New York. From New York. That's just a suggestion for us. 65? Ha! That's just a suggestion. You know, so the other day, uh, for 20-something days, I've had this patch on. I couldn't drive, so my lovely wife has been driving me. Uh, you guys ever hear Miss Daisy? <laughs> anyway, I'm used to, when I go somewhere, I'm used to going somewhere and getting there. You know, and when I drive, I, I don't see things because I'm going so fast. But when Miss Daisy's driving, I see everything. I see, oh, look at deer. Oh, look at flowers. Oh, trees. Everything. And, and so, you know, I look at the speed, because speed, I think she's doing like 10 on the freeway, and she's doing like 65. Going, dang, she's doing the speed limit. And all these cars are honking, they're going, rrr, rrr. You know, so I know for a fact that New Yorkers at 65 is only a suggestion. It's not the law. But we are responsible to know the laws of the state of New York. What does S-T-O-P mean? Slow down. <laughs> yeah, just go through as long as there's nobody there. As long as you hit your horn. You hit your horn, it's legal. Ah, 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 and then you go right through. That's how it is in New York. See, people outside of New York, they don't understand. We, we were in Williamsville. Williamsville. And there's a line of cars. Stray's, Miss Daisy's driving me to my eye appointment. And the light turns green. <laughs> 14 cars start honking the horn. It just turned green like a second ago. I'm thinking, what the? What is, what's wrong with people? New Yorkers. They're in a hurry to go where? Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere. You know, I had, to go, I had to go see my doctor, and he was going to put stuff in my eyes and make me hurt. I wasn't in a hurry to get there. You know, half of you hate your job. You're going to drive fast to go somewhere you hate? <laughs> get out of my way. I'm late for work. I hate that place. Can't stand it. Get out of my way. I'm late. We need to slow down, people. We need to be responsible for things that we do in the workplace, on the highways, in the Bible, in your life. Don't just listen to God's word. Live God's word. Not only live it, but apply it in your life. How can, this, can I apply this in my life? Today may be the day God will do it suddenly. Today may be the day God is going to do this suddenly. One thing, one person, one event can change your life. Did you know that one person in your life could change it? Good or bad. Suddenly, your breakthrough is on the way. Suddenly, your breakthrough is on the way. Somebody needs to hear this. Suddenly, your breakthrough is on the way. Amen. Be ready, because suddenly comes like a thief in the night.
suddenly comes when you least expect it. Suddenly comes unexpectedly. Suddenly comes all at once. Be ready. Be in a state of prepar preparation. You know, when we, we see the Old Testament, they talk about the Jews and the Passover. How were they supposed to eat their Passover meal? They were supposed, oh, see, who has a Bible here? You, they, they were supposed to eat it with their sandals on their feet, with their cloaks tucked in their belt, be ready to go. Because at a moment's notice, when God said move, they had to move. When God said go, like I said, they don't say, oh, can I fix my hair? Oh, 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 how am I looking? Oh, how am I looking? God says now. God says go. But so many of us, when God says go, what do we say? Well. Well. We're praying, Lord, help me out of the situation. I don't know how I got myself into it, Lord. Can you help me get out of it? God says move. Well. I'm kind of comfortable here. You know, when they shoot at my house, they, they don't really shoot low, they shoot high. You know, and, and God is saying, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to do something. And we need to start listening to God. Amen? Amen? We need to start listening to that still, small voice. And I'll finish with this story. I had a mentor of mine, Pastor Darwin Benjamin. Love that man. Great man of God. The time I was in law enforcement, he was in law enforcement. He was working um, Department of Corrections in the Youth, youth Authority. That's under 24-year-old uh, offenders. And he got saved. He got radically saved. And he was working in this thing. And he felt the desire to get out of this job and go into ministry. He got prophesied over that he was going to go into ministry. So he had this prayer closet that he would go into and he would seek God's face and he would pray. And he would pray and he would pray almost every day, Lord, tell me what to do. Should I quit my job and go into ministry? Should I quit my job and go into ministry? Lord, I'm here, waiting to hear from you. He said he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he never heard from God. Then one day he was in his prayer closet, and he was praying, Lord, I need to know, should I quit my job and go into ministry? And he said very clearly, a voice came out of the ceiling and said, quit your job and go into ministry. And he said, get behind me, Satan, because hey, he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear the truth. He was praying for it. He was praying for it. He was praying for it. And when God started to move, suddenly he didn't want to hear it. Are we like that? Do we pray and we pray and we pray? But when the answer comes, it's not how we think it should be. So we tell God, forget about it. Forget about it, God. I got this. How many people know that when God moves, suddenly, God moves? Yeah. When we move suddenly, eh, not so much. <laughs> not so much. I got another quick story. Before my eye surgery, uh, Lucy bought this plant. It was a fig tree. You guys know what figs are? She bought this fig tree. And it's in a little pot thing, and you take it and you put. You have to put it in a, a big planter. And so she says, "Can you do me a favor?" I said, "Oh, absolutely, pumpkin. What do you need? Can you plant this fig tree for me?" I said, "Oh, absolutely. I'll get right on it." So that's before my eye surgery. So yesterday I'm looking over there. There's that fig tree sort of sitting on the counter, not planted, all withered and died. You know, it's like oh. suddenly. So here she said. Can you do this? I said, yes, and I never did it. Is that how we do with God? Is that how we act with God? God says, do this. And we go, sure, I'll do that. But we never act on it. Just me? Just Pastor John? I've never done that. The only one? Nope. I'm the only one? Okay. I'll take the, I'll take the blame for that. Suddenly. <clears throat> suddenly. I don't come back for a couple more weeks, I think, hopefully. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. What I'd like to do, I'd like to hear your suddenly testimonies. Just in the next two weeks, if something, something really happens, write it down. If suddenly, all of a sudden, suddenly, your finances are taken care of. Suddenly, you're healed. Suddenly, your son that was on drugs becomes 
clean and sober. Suddenly, your husband, once again, suddenly, your wife, I guess it'd be husband here, huh? I just want to hear a suddenly moment. Tell Pastor Maria, let her know. You know what happened? Suddenly. Amen. Suddenly God moved. I was not expecting it, but God moved. How did he move? Suddenly. Suddenly. Today may be the day God will do it suddenly. One thing, one person, one event can change your life suddenly. And your breakthrough is on the way. Amen. Suddenly. Would you bow your heads? Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this word. We pray that it will stay in our heart. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you in spirit and truth. We come to you in spirit and truth, Lord, because you are a spirit. We deal with this in the supernatural, Lord. Begin to move in our life. You know our heart, Lord. You know our wants. You know our desires, Lord. We call on you. What seems impossible to man is not impossible for you, Lord. Mm -hmm. It is very possible. Because you don't operate in the realm of man. You operate in the realm of God. So right now, Lord, as we come before you, hear our requests, hear our prayers, Lord, on behalf of our loved ones, on behalf of ourselves, Lord. If we need healing, Lord, heal. If we need financial support, Lord, finances. Lord, if we need comfort, give us comfort. Lord, take away any spirit of depression, anxiety, Father God, and give us peace, give us joy. And Lord, take away the spirit of fear, Lord, that this pandemic and this government and this society has created upon us. And show us, Lord, your love. Show us your mercy. Show us your joy. Amen. Father, we just thank you that you are the God that you are. And we are your people, Lord. We come before you today just to give you honor, glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Suddenly, they said, amen. amen.